Hello, my name is Justin Yim, and I am presenting Precision Robotic Leaping and Landing using Stance Phase Balance. In this work, we demonstrate precise jumps and balanced landings using the small monopedal robot Salta 1P. Salta 1P is about 30 centimeters tall when fully extended, and it has a 15 centimeter long leg. It weighs about 100 grams altogether. In previous work, we demonstrated precise jumping control that enables the robot to scale obstacles higher than its full body length without missing a step. We also developed onboard estimation that measures angle and velocity in order to enable the robot to run outdoors and fully autonomously. This work is based on flight phase control, in which the robot uses its time in the air to set its leg length and the angle of its leg so that it can direct its next jump after a short stance phase. Our previous flight phase jumping control achieved an accuracy of about 9 centimeters for its foot placement. This is accurate enough to scale the, st uh, the chair and the table, but is not accurate enough to hit small targets like narrow steps or tree branches. In addition, flight phase control and estimation does not handle the problem of getting the robot to stop and stand still after a landing. In this work, we developed stance phase control to enable Salta 1P to do precise jumping and land and stop. First, I'll present the stance phase model for the robot. Salt 1B consists mainly of three rigid bodies. The chassis carries the main mass of the robot, the processors, and the batteries. The reaction wheel tail controls the pitch angle of the robot, or its orientation in the sagittal plane. The leg motor controls the extension and retraction of the foot, which, on the leg linkage, is constrained to move in a straight line that is coincident with the robot's center of gravity. Finally, on top of the robot are two small aerodynamic thrusters, which stabilize the sagittal plane, controlling the roll and the yaw angles of the robot. In this work, we assume that the pitch direction is the most important motion, and that the robot's motion is planar. We do this by having the robot align its heading with the direction of its jump, in the plane of its ballistic motion. And because these thrusters are rather small and were oriented mainly for aerial attitude orientation, they are augmented on the ground by a bar foot, which prevents large roll motions when in contact with the ground. While on the ground, Salt 1P very closely resembles the classic reaction wheel inverted pendulum, with a small modification. The leg linkage allows variation of the pendulum length, actuated by the leg motor. We are interested in the motion of the robot's center of gravity, and we parameterize its distance from the contact point with the ground as R, and we characterize its angle as theta. The two control inputs to this model are the torque of the reaction wheel and the desired angle of the series elastic leg motor. We break up the control of the robot's center of gravity motion into two parts, the radial component and the lean angle. Lean angle theta is controlled by the reaction wheel tail. Our leaning controller for this work is based on previous work in balance control. A key insight is that the only torque applied about the robot's foot is due to gravity. Therefore, the dynamics for the leaning motion can be written simply in terms of the angular momentum of the robot about its contact point with the ground and the first three derivatives of this angular momentum. The radial motion is controlled by the series elastic actuator, which extends and retracts the leg on the ground. During launch, we use an open loop, energy-based expression that relates the winding of the spring to the takeoff velocity. During landing, we use closed loop force control over the series elastic actuator to emulate a damper, decelerating the robot and removing energy. In order to get the robot to jump to a specific point, we need to reach appropriate liftoff conditions at the end of stance. When we have several objectives for our trajectory, at this liftoff point. First, we'd like it to reach a target angle. We'd also like it to reach zero angular velocity on liftoff to improve accuracy. We also want the robot to have zero angular momentum on liftoff so that the reaction wheel is spinning slowly. This maximizes the control authority that it has in the air and on touchdown and landing. And during the stance phase for launch, we'd also like the reaction wheel to avoid saturation to maximize our control authority on the ground before we take off. Meanwhile, the leg extension should reach the appropriate liftoff velocity at the specific time we'd like it to lift off. Here I'll plot the leaning trajectory in green and the open loop leg motion in orange. The, uh, the robot moves in the lean angle first and then in the radial direction. This sequencing allows the robot to decouple the motions a little bit by reducing the Coriolis and the centrifugal cu coupling terms. Here the robot leans first backwards and then forwards in order to reach zero angular momentum stops at the end, reaches zero angular velocity, and then lifts off. We can now look at how precise we'd expect this motion to be. The horizontal velocity of the robot, and consequently the accuracy of the jump, will depend critically on the angle of the robot on liftoff, and we can compare the sensitivity to the angle 
to our previous work with flight phase control, in which the robot used touchdown angle in order to direct its next bounce. In our previous work, we showed that variation of the touchdown angle changed the horizontal velocity by about 7 to 17 meters per second per radian for a salto. In contrast, for the new stance phase launch, the horizontal velocity varies with the angle based, according to small angle approximation, approximately with the magnitude of the vertical velocity on liftoff, which for salto is 2 to 4 meters per second per radian. This is an approximately fourfold decrease in sensitivity compared to the earlier flight phase control. And so, for similar angle errors, we should expect the stance phase to be significantly more precise in the directing launches than the flight phase. To test this experimentally, we ran a series of 10 trials in which the robot was commanded to jump on the same trajectory. This video shows an overlay of all 10 trials played back at half speed. Salto 1P jumped an average of 35 centimeters, or just over one full body length, and its variation in distance was only 1.6 centimeters, standard deviation, now accurate enough to hit narrow targets. Next, let's look at the problem of landing. Like in the launch phase, landing will depend very critically on the robot's angle and the landing control performance. It's also important that the robot touches down at an appropriate angle, because if it leans too far forwards or backwards, the landing might not be recoverable and the robot will not be able to balance. We can solve for the appropriate liftoff, uh, sorry, touchdown angle using conservation of angular momentum and uh, some assumptions about the robot, like that it's a single rigid body and that the collision is uh, inelastic. Finally, we use a small angle approximation. Here, we would like to find the angle theta that if the robot collides with the ground, will take the robot to a perfect upright position without any control action. This is ideal since it maximizes the control authority that's available to the reaction wheel to recover. We parameterize this in terms of the robot's leg length r, the horizontal velocity vx, and the vertical velocity vz. With the approximations that I mentioned earlier, this expression is very simple. It also depends on this term tt, or the time constant of toppling, for the robot considered as a rigid body. In the case of a point mass on top of a massless rigid rod, this is the familiar pendulum time constant. We can also analyze this expression to figure out how far the robot could lean on touchdown before it is not able to recover and balance. This expression is based upon the value theta max, which is the maximum angle that the reaction wheel can lean before it is uh, going to fall over unrecoverably. Plugging in values for salto, falling from a height of one meter, the maximum recovery margin is about plus or minus 2.3 degrees, which is quite tight. This demonstrates why it is so hard to land on a narrow target like this, similar to the problem of an acrobat landing with feet together at the end of a maneuver. To test the reliability of landings experimentally, we ran a series of 60 trials. The robot was commanded to jump at three different velocities and five different lean angles, forwards and backwards. This is a series of six videos showing some representative jumps vertically and backwards. Out of these 60 trials, Celta successfully landed upright 57 out of 60 times, or 95% of the time. In three of the trials, the robot fell forwards. In five of the trials that landed upright, the robot rested not just on its foot as intended, but also on the back portion of its linkage, or the heel. These tests are now reliable enough, and the jumps precise enough, that the robot can do a sequence of jumps to narrow targets. Here, each of these tape marks on the floor is only five centimeters long. In motion capture, we then commanded Salto to jump to each of these targets in turn. In conclusion, we present stance phase control that enables the robot to make leaps to narrow targets and balance on a narrow support. Finally, we present approximate air sensitivity and landing air bounds. Thank you.